Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. You guessed it. Welcome back to the world's worst fishing. I'm Chris Jones, and uh, today I'm gonna do uh, some core shot worms. Um, I was sitting at work today, and, um, and I was thinking, man, I really wanna do a swim bait color in the core shot worm. So, um, you've probably seen a hitch color or a light hitch color. Um, so we're gonna do light hitch in the core shot. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do um, the shell of the worm will be a laminate, two, two color laminate. One side's gonna be a really light watermelon. The other side's gonna be a really light white pearl. And then the core down the center is gonna be a very rich blue. And I think that will have a really cool effect in a worm. I've never seen a worm in this color pattern. Um, I've never seen um, anyone else make the core shot bait in this color. Um, so I'm really hoping it turns out well. It's a gorgeous swim bait color, uh, huge on the west coast, huge up north. Um, it's a very well-known color. It's a very successful color. Um, hopefully now it's gonna be a well-known worm color. So anyway, that's what we're gonna be doing. Um, we've got our supplies ready behind us and uh, we're gonna go ahead and get started. So I'm gonna bump the camera up here. And uh, before we get started though, make sure to like and subscribe, notification bell. Okay, so real quick, we have the core shot worm mold here and you can see that the uh, rods are already in place. However, I have to take those out so that I can lubricate the rods, um, which is always the first step to making core shot worms. Um, but we're not quite there yet. I have two cups measured out, one cup each of dead on plastic worm blend. And uh, I have some Lureworks watermelon for the watermelon side. Some pearl white as well from Lureworks. Um, good gosh, more Lureworks. Blue pearl that I'm gonna mix with this dead on blue color right there, neo blue, for the uh, actual core color. So we're gonna shoot the shells first. Uh, that's always the first step. Um, and then uh, if you've never seen this mold, um, I think you'll I think you'll really really like what this thing can do. Um, so as I go along, obviously I'll kind of demonstrate how you use the mold. Uh, but I'm really excited to see this color. Um, yeah, let's do it. Okay, we're we're gonna do uh, four minutes for both cups. I think that will uh, do it just about right. So just a very very quick overview of the core shot mold. The plastic comes in, it fills around the rod, okay, which creates the shell. When you open up the mold, you then have a shell of plastic over the rod. You slide it off the rod, which leaves a hollow bait, essentially. It's a hollow stick worm. You put the hollow shell back in the cavity, and whenever you shoot the core color, the only place that plastic can go is through the center of that hollow core Thus, you get the core shot effect. So the first step is I need to take these rods out and I need to lubricate them. Uh, it gets a little messy the way that I do it, but I don't really care. I literally just douse them in worm oil. Uh, I used to have some really, really awesome lubricant spray, but you can use cooking oil, Pam, um, whatever you want, WD-40. Uh, in you know, you probably want to put a little rag down to soak in the <laughs> the oil. It gets a little messy but um, it really doesn't matter at the end of the day. Bait making is messy, so I kind of expect it. So I'm gonna put the rods in and close the mold. All right, and I wanna make sure that it closes very tightly, so I, uh, I really, I really um, tighten those a lot. And then we're gonna shoot literally a laminate the normal way with the two color blending block. So one side, one, uh, then the other side with the twin injector and that will shoot our cores, uh, excuse me, that will shoot our shells. Um, and then after that, we'll take the shells out, we'll make a few more. Uh, we're gonna just make a bunch of shells first and then we'll work on the core. So once my plastic is done from the microwave, we'll build the color and then we will go ahead and get started. And real quick, while that's in the microwave, I wanted to show you some of the coolest color shifting pigment I've gotten yet. This stuff, I hope the camera picks it up. And then look how awesome the eye matches matches the color. It is gorgeous color shifting. This is also some cosmetic stuff 
from uh, Etsy, I believe. Very expensive, but um, yeah, how do you beat that? Really cool stuff. Wanted to show you guys real quick. Okay, there we have our two gorgeous cups of clear plastic ready to go. Um, so one side we're going to do um, just a little bit of watermelon. And there again, we want these very, very um, translucent. We want to be able to see through our colors. Come on now. Yeah, this stuff's like super, super, super thick. You can see how it doesn't even come out right. We want to be able to see through these colors really well so that we can A, see the core, and it just has the proper core shot effect. If the shell is super thick, then you really won't see the cores really well, except for the tips. And uh, to me, it just doesn't look near as good. Um, yeah, we're definitely going to need more than that. But you get the idea. You want to start small. <laughs> start with small quantities of uh, colorant and then work your way up. So, come on now. In fact, that right there might might do it. So, uh, that is like the worst colorant. This Allure Works watermelon. I love the way it looks, but it is so thick. Maybe it's just this bottle. I don't know. Let me know if you guys have this one and if it's a pain in the butt to use. I don't know if I just got a, a bad bottle or what, but uh, it's it's very thick. It's almost like they didn't put enough oil in it. You can't really squeeze it out in drops. Okay. We're gonna let that rest for a second. We're gonna add our pearl white. And again, not very much. Okay. We're gonna start with that, see how that looks. In a good way, like I mentioned in most of my videos, a good way to tell how thick your color is is to look at it on your stirring rod or your knife and just see if you can see your knife under the plastic like you can see it over there. That's how you know when you're really dealing with some see-through stuff. Yeah, so that's absolutely enough pearl white that looks good. At least I, I think it is, I don't know, you never know. I'll know when I get the shells out. <laughs> of the actual mold if, if it's going to look okay. I might have to actually add some color, you never know. But the main thing is that you don't want to add too much color because then you have to start over. Okay, now we're going to shoot a round of shells. So we're going to do it just like any normal laminate. Bring it over to the laminate block, or excuse me, the blending block, and slow even pressure. There you go. Hold it for just a second. Okay. We will hope that that is gonna work. All right, let's take a look at our shells. See how they did. Come on. Gotta get some of the uh, extras off first. Okay, here we go. Ugh, come on. Come on, oh yeah. Yeah, let's take a look here. Mm-hmm. In fact, the pearl could actually be maybe a little thicker. So you can see we have the watermelon side there now on your left and the pearl side on the right. They look really good. They could actually be thicker, though. I still think these will look great, um, but you can make them thicker than that if you so choose. So... Um, you don't have to get them quite this see-through. But like I said, it's it's better to be careful and have your shells come out a little too see-through than too thick. Because this will absolutely show off the core color really well. I mean, that'll be like boss core right there. Um, so it the challenge is to get that kind of harmony between the shell color and the core color without one overpowering the other. Uh, but I do think that right there will look rather lovely. So what we're going to do um, is we're going to make some more, but we're actually going to thicken the shells just a little bit, just to let you see what that looks like as well. Um, and then we will return shortly. Okay, we thickened our two colors up just a little bit. Now we're going to shoot the second round of shells. Okay. If I can get this lined up, there we go. All right, here we go. 
perfect. Felt good and solid. Yeah. I definitely think those will look rather, rather, rather nice. Oh, that was a fail. We're gonna get out these um, other shells here and see if they did any better. Yeah, I definitely think so. So look at the contrast between the two sides on those versus the ones from earlier. Just slightly darker, but yet very see-through. You can see the rod going through it. Um, so that will still have a really, really great court effect. Um, and I think you'll see, you'll still see more of the shell color because seeing the shell color is important too. It's not all about the core. You wanna to try to find a, a good, happy medium between the two. And uh, I think that's it right there. So definitely looking forward to seeing those. Um, we're gonna make a few more shells uh, with the same color. So I'm not gonna show all of that for obvious reasons because I don't want the video to be super long. Look at that. Guess I didn't get all the colorant stirred in. That's kind of neat. I, I wonder if it'll stay like that. It's, uh, that's kind of interesting. So anyway, we're going to cut it here and we will meet you back when it's time to make some cores. Okay, so we are back. We have our shells over here. I think that's about 25 of them or so. Um, something like that. So we're going to take the shells. All right. Make sure both ends are open. And we're gonna line up that egg sac there in the middle. Okay, just like that. And that's all you have to do. Doesn't really matter if you put them in upside down. I mean, there's no wrong way to put them in as long as they're lined up. Okay, so looking good, looking good. All right. And we'll get this one here. Okay. Now we're going to close the mold and we are ready now to fill this mold with the core plastic uh, which we are going to mix up now. Okie dokie, here is our core plastic again that's just dead on plastic worm blend and you'll notice I'm making sick worms without salt. Well, when I'm doing core shots, salt clouds up colors so I'm definitely not going to put them in the shell. You can put salt in the cores, you'll just need to get your core super hot that way that plastic will actually flow all the way and fill the, the, the core entirely. Uh, because dead on plastic, black bucket, black label stuff is dense and heavy and sinks already, I don't use it at all. Uh, salt is a pain in the butt to work with and I try to avoid it at all costs. But sometimes it is necessary. So to make the core, I'm not really worried about making my color too thick or too opaque. Um, it doesn't really need to be see-through. So we're just gonna mix something up till I like whatever the shade of blue is. Um, and with this stuff right here, that's not hard to do. Blue pearl mixed with a little bit of uh, pigment, to me always just looks gorgeous. So, you know, the only thing you have to determine is how um, dark you want it. You know, you can add darker blues, lighter blues. Since I'm kind of going for light hitch, um, I'm not going to go any darker than this. I have some blue pigments that are darker blue, that are a darker shade of blue than that, but I didn't really want them for this bait because uh, I'm going for sort of a light hitch, so I kind of was thinking I'll go with a little lighter shade of blue. But that's nice and thick. I think we're going to think we're going to go with that. It's hard. It's hard not to get something that you like. So I'm going to grab a glove real quick, <clears throat> and we're going to do this right now. Okay, boom. Always make sure that your core plastic is very hot though. That's a little on the uh, cooler side. You normally wanna shoot it super hot, but I felt like it was hot enough. Um, <laughs> so hopefully I was right, but uh, we're gonna pop this back in the microwave and uh, hopefully those turned out well. Okay, moment of truth, but first, Y'all know the drill. Got to do a quick drum roll. We're going to do a double stroke roll. We're going to start slow, then bring it up the tempo. Let's see. 
if they turned out. Yes, they did. Look at that. Kind of an aqua, almost an aqua color. But let's get them, uh, you know what? I need my scissors. Come on now. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, you can see it good from that angle. The core is going all the way through. And in fact, my next shot of cores, I'm gonna make the core a little bit darker blue. Yeah, I actually want, I actually want a little bit darker in there, I think. So I'm, I'm hoping that that'll work. But yeah, there it is. The light hitch core shot. Sweet. Let's get them, get them all done here. Yeah. How about that? Yeah. Pretty cool. Such a cool worm. Such a cool idea that he had. This is, of course, the Angling AI Core Shot Stickworm Mold. He also makes this Core Shot uh, mold in a Ned Worm. So, like a three and a half inch stickworm. I'm pretty sure you guys are familiar with Neds, um, but that's very, very, very popular. All right, now we're gonna. Now some of these um, some of these shells are lighter. Yeah, there's one of the super light ones. We're gonna toss that one aside for right now. Figure out later if I want to actually use those or not because I really like the way that these are looking. Um, the thicker shells. So anyway, we're gonna uh, we're actually gonna darken up the core and hope that that doesn't ruin it. You know, bait making's funny. You know, five minutes ago I was talking about how I didn't want to make this too dark. Now I'm darkening it up. So you never know until you get your baits out how you really um, how, how you really want them to look. So uh, we're gonna darken this up with some Lureworks Thalo Blue, and you'll see right away that darkens it up a smidge. Yeah, that's definitely darker. All right, we're gonna go with that. Plastic still not oh, plastic still nice and hot. So I think we'll get a successful core fill. Yeah, that felt good. That felt very, 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 very good. Okay. We will see you guys in just a minute or two. Okay, let's see if the darker core did better or worse. Ah, you never know. Oh, I definitely like it better, but one of them didn't fill. No, look at that. Complete fail. That is what failure looks like. And uh, I'm not really sure what happened. Both ends were open. That's nice and open. Just failed. Okay, but the other ones did not fail. Hey, look at that. The one with the streak in it from the green, uh, excuse me, from the watermelon survived. So we'll definitely take a look at that. Yeah, I definitely like the darker better. What do you guys think? Did you like, do you like the darker core or <clears throat> the lighter core? Same shell, just different cores. I definitely like the, uh, definitely like the darker core. So we're gonna make some more of those. Uh, can somebody tell me what in the world is going on in my shop tonight? Two cores didn't fill all the way, one of them like created a head and this one like blended in with the bait I don't know what that one did but these two turned out so at least that man this is uh this is not my best night this is core shot slop okay let's take a look at the um these are the lighter shells with the darker core. Mother, what is with these cores? I don't understand it. Ah, you see that? Fatal flaw. That was not open. Okay, that's my fault. I'll tell you though, those ain't bad. It's much more of a core effect than these. These look more like light hitch to me, just because I, I just think you can see more of the three colors here, but I tell you, that's really good. It's 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 very subtle that that there's a laminate there. You from afar you just think it's maybe a green worm with a blue core. I don't know. It's very 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 subtle, but uh, I tell you I like it a lot. 
So, yeah, that's the uh, lighter shells with the uh, dark core. So we kind of have three variations tonight. Oops, you weren't supposed to see that. Okay, so uh, this is kind of funny. Quick overview. So we have the, um, and those are slightly waterlogged, but we have the thicker shell with the lighter core. We have the thicker shell with the uh, darker core on these, okay? And then we have, last but not least, the lighter shell with the darker core. <laughs> so we kind of wound up with three different things tonight by accident. I was hoping just to nail it once and just make, you know, 15, 20, 30 of these things. Uh, but a lot of the cores didn't fill, um, which that's, that, that's really odd. I've had great success with that mold. Um, that doesn't speak negatively to the mold. I was just doing something wrong. I'm not sure. I've made a million of these things, and um, it's usually very rare that one doesn't fill. As long as you're keeping the plastic hot, normally all your cores fill. So I, I was definitely, uh, I didn't have the mojo tonight. But um, anyway, let me know which ones you like best. If you like the, the first attempt, the second attempt, and then uh, and then the last attempt. Well, technically those were the first shells, but uh, let me know which ones you like, left, middle, or right. I, me personally, I like the middle. That's what I had in mind the whole time, but the right ones are, are pretty awesome. The ones on the left are the ones that I like the least. So here we have my makeshift bar underneath my biggest bass. Say hello everybody to, well he doesn't have a name, Mr. Bass. So we're gonna do a, a martini, which is what I drink when I'm not drinking beer. So I like London, London gin martinis. So we're gonna pour that into some ice there. All right. And then we're going to add a French wine called Lille, formerly Kina Lille. And this martini is based on the James Bond recipe from Casino Royale, the Vesper Martini. Add a little Lille to it. Normally you would also mix vodka into this. But I enjoy this nonetheless. I just don't have any vodka. So, of course, shaken, not stirred. Gotta get that gin nice and bruised. And here we go. Boom. Normally I would have an olive or a lemon slice, but I don't have either. So this is a poor man's martini. Mmm. That is terrific. Got the World Series on. Tonight is game seven. So by the time you see this video, obviously this will be well over with. A couple days old. But uh, anyway, we're going to enjoy the rest of our evening. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, please let me know which ones you like the most. And... Um, we will definitely see you next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, tell your friends. Yeah. We'll catch you next time. Already said that, right? Yeah, pretty sure I already said that. But just in case I didn't say it, we'll catch you next time.